Good morning students, now let us start our class in costing. So in the previous classes we have discussed in detail about the introduction of cost accounting in an enterprise, uh, the various terms relating to costing that is cost, costing, cost accounting and cost accountancy, objectives of cost accounting, its advantages and how we can classify the cost into various types. So in that module, we have uh, uh, seen that the cost accounting is most advantageous to large production houses when compared to a trading concern. So why uh, large production house benefits more from cost accounting? The main reason behind that, in a production organization, uh, there are many levels of activity and each levels of activity incurs cost whereas in trading concern the levels of activities are comparatively lower. So if we take uh, the case of a production organization the various levels of activities are first uh, step first we need an initial investment and that keeping that apart the first function or the first activity that a production organization normally does is purchase of raw materials. So while purchasing raw materials, a production organization incurs cost. Then this raw material is stored in a go down or store room. That time also the production organization incurs storage cost. And when the time arrives for production, the raw materials from this go down is transferred to the factory where the actual production takes place. So there also a production organization incurs many types of expenses that is uh, expenses relating to the to converting the raw materials into finished product and once the finished product is made this finished product is transferred to warehouse and it is stored there till it reaches the ultimate consumer. There also uh, a production organization incurs expense. So these are the various broad levels of activity where a production organization incurs cost. Comparatively uh, when you see a trading organization, the main activity of a trading organization is purchase of finished goods and then reselling it at a higher price. So the levels of activities are comparatively lower. So a production organization incurs cost in these levels of activities whereas trading organization incurs cost at these two levels of activities. So when we see this uh, we can uh, make out that cost accounting is more useful for a production organization because we have to control cost in these levels of activity. Only when cost is controlled we can reduce the cost of production. Once the cost of production is reduced we can maximize our profit and that is the ultimate aim of any business organization. So for a production organization cost accounting is inevitable or we can say it is indispensable. So coming on to our uh, module uh, the main aim of a um, production organization is uh, the main aim of uh, introducing cost accounting in a production organization is to ascertain the cost of production or to find out the cost of product. So what is the main aim of introducing cost accounting in a production organization to find out the cost of a product or to ascertain the cost of production. So why do we need this cost? In simple terms we can say that this cost is needed to fix the selling price of a product. How can we sell, uh, fix the selling price by knowing the cost of a product? Only after knowing the cost of a product we can add our profit to that cost and then arrive at 
selling price. But apart from this, the main aim or the main objective of introducing cost accounting in a production organization is to control cost. Through controlling cost, we can reduce the cost of production. So how can we control the cost? The cost is controlled by finding out the estimated cost. Estimated cost means before the production starts we have to estimate a cost that is how much expenses will be incurred if we produce so, such and such product. And after uh, arriving at an estimate cost actual production takes place and then we record the actual cost incurred. So cost control is done by comparing this estimated cost with actual cost. If actual cost is more than estimated cost, it means that variances have occurred. So the uh, management has to analyze the causes of variance, the persons responsible for causing such variance and have to take decisions so that these variances do not occur in future. In this way, cost is controlled. So for cost control, we have to know the actual cost. Not only the total cost, but the cost at various levels of activities has to be known and it has to be compared with the, the estimated cost that we arrived at. Only then we can make out or we can calculate or we can find out if there is any variances. So how can uh, we arrive at uh, uh, the actual cost or uh, the cost at various levels of activity? For that purpose, we have divided the cost incurred in an organization into various elements. So in the previous uh, module, we have discussed the elements of cost. So the costs are divided or classified into different elements for the purpose of calculating cost at various levels of activity. So the broad three elements of cost is materials, labor and then expenses. Materials, uh, materials are those expenses uh, or the expenses incurred by the organization in procuring the raw materials required to make the finished product. That cost comes under the category materials. Now labor means the wages paid to the employees who work in an organization. And under expenses categories, all those expenses or all those uh, costs are included which do not come under material or labor. So in the second module, we have already discussed the materials, element materials. Now in today's class, we will discuss about labor. So what is a labor? Labor means work. Which work? The work done by workers or laborers. So we can say that labor is the human effort required by the organization to convert the raw materials into finished product. This labor, uh, the remuneration given to the labor is known as wages. So in cost accounting, both the terms labor and wages, they are used interchangeably though the meanings are different. Labor means the actual work done by the workers and wages is the remuneration given to workers for the work done by them. But in cost accounting, we use the term interchangeably. Instead of wages, we can use the term labor. So we can say that labor is the human effort or the work done by an employee in an organization or the work uh, uh, that uh, requires or the work that is needed to convert the raw materials into finished product. Now this labor is again divided into two, direct labor and indirect labor. Now we can see what is direct labor and what is indirect labor. Direct labor is a labor which is directly involved in the production process. 
and what is indirect labor this is the just just the opposite of direct labor that is the labor which is not directly involved in the production process uh, so we can take an example of a factory where production takes place so the employees who actually uh, converts this raw materials into finished product comes under direct labor because they are directly involved in production process but they are not the only employees that are employed in the organization there may be other employees also uh, there are employees who clean the factory area there are employees who are employed to prepare uh, food for the other employees so their services are also known as labor but since their services or their work is not directly involved in the production process they are known as indirect labor so this is the main difference between direct and indirect labor direct labor is directly engaged in the production or manufacturing of finished product whereas indirect labor is not directly involved in the production process now coming on to the difference between direct labor and indirect labor the first main difference is the meaning itself that is uh, labor directly involved in production process and the labor which is not directly involved in production process the second difference is that direct labor can be directly identified with the finished product whereas the indirect labor cannot be directly identified with the finished product cannot be directly identified with the finished product now take the example of the wooden table so Uh, the carpenter who uh, uses or who uh, converts the uh, raw wood into this wooden table the work of a carpenter can be seen in the wooden table so we can say that they are, it is directly or the work of a carpenter can be directly identified with the finished product so his work comes under direct labor whereas there may be employees who assist this car carpenter for bringing the wood to the manufacturing place or uh, some other extra help their work is not cannot, cannot be seen in this table so we can say that their work comes under indirect labor because they cannot be or their work cannot be identified with this finished product so we can say that direct labor is primary to production whereas indirect labor is secondary to production now uh, i have already said that the remuneration given to labor is known as wages so the wages paid to direct labor is known as direct wages and the wages paid to indirect labor is known as indirect wages now how will uh, we uh, deal with this direct wages and indirect wages in ascertaining the cost of production i already told you that the main objective of cost accounting is to ascertain the cost of production so to find out the cost of production uh, in cost accounting there is a clear format that is preparation of cost sheet through preparing cost sheet we ascertain the cost of production not only the total cost but the cost at various levels of activity we have already discussed the format of cost sheet in broader terms uh, so i just revise it so the first step is the calculation of prime cost the prime cost is arrived at uh, by adding all the direct expenses that is direct material direct labor and direct expenses so the all the direct part adds up or sums up to uh, arrive at prime cost 
and to this prime cost we add indirect expenses also known as overhead. When in the, all the indirect expenses incurred in manufacturing a product is added to this prime cost, we get the total cost. This indirect expense is also classified into four different types. First one is, first one is factory overhead, factory overhead that is the direct indirect expenses incurred in a factory. Then administration overhead that is the indirect expenses incurred in an office. Then comes selling overhead. Selling overhead is the indirect expenses incurred by an organization uh, to sell their product, to create new customers or stimulate the customers to purchase the product. And then comes distribution overhead. It is the indirect expenses incurred by the organization to distribute the finished goods kept in the warehouse of the organization to the ultimate consumers. So by adding all these indirect expenses to prime cost, we arrive at total cost. So while taking our direct labor and indirect labor, one of the difference is that the direct labor or direct wages is added to arrive at prime cost, whereas indirect labor is included in factory overheads. So here uh, uh, in this class, uh, we discussed about the term labor types of labor and the difference between direct labor and indirect labor. Thank you.